Let's see how to construct a lattice-based digital signature scheme. In this video, we will examine key generation, signing, and verification. Let's begin with key generation. We can define the polynomial ring denoted by R in terms of the integers mod Q and the polynomial x to the power of n plus 1. We need to generate the matrix A hat. The entries of this matrix are elements of this ring. The dimensions of the matrix are k by l. There are k rows and l columns. So this is a rectangular matrix. We also need to generate a secret column vector, S0. And the entries of this column vector are also elements of this ring. This column vector has L entries. It's an L by 1 matrix. So it has L rows and 1 column. We also need to generate an error column vector E0. And this is also a column vector, but it has a different number of entries. It is a K by one matrix. So it has K rows and one column. Now let's define the public column vector P0. We can define this as A times S0 plus E0. So we are multiplying a K by L matrix and an L by 1 matrix. The result of that matrix multiplication gives us a K by 1 column vector. And we can add this K by 1 column vector to this K by 1 column vector. And that gives us the public vector which is a k by 1 column vector. Now we have all the information that's necessary to create a pair of keys. We're going to have a secret key, which we will use for signing, and then we will broadcast a public key. And that public key will be used for verification. So let's have a look at what is inside the secret key. So SK stands for secret key. And in the secret key, we're going to include A, that's this matrix that we generated. We will also include S0 and E0. So this is the information that is required to construct this public column vector P0. And in the public key, we're going to include, so PK for public key, we're going to include the matrix A, and we're also going to include P0. So that's this matrix and this public column vector. They are included in the public key. And this public key is being sent through a public channel. So it is available to adversaries, and they can use this information to attempt to perform cryptanalysis. Now let's see what needs to be done with the secret key. So the secret key is going to be used to sign a message. So now we're going to have a look at the signing procedure. In the signing procedure, we're going to have to generate another secret vector. And that is going to be a secret column vector, S1. And this is also going to be an L by 1 matrix. So L by 1. This has L rows and 1 column. That's why we're, we're, we're actually considering this to be a column vector. And now we're going to define the vector W. W is going to be defined using this A that we got from the secret key and this S1. So we're going to multiply A and S1. And then we're going to do an approximation procedure that involves 
only considering the higher order bits of all of the coefficients in this vector. And I'll denote that with these square brackets. So we're only considering the higher order bits in each of the coefficients of this vector. And that is the definition of this vector w. Now, let's define the value h. We can get h by hashing. So this capital H means we're hashing. We're going to hash the message m concatenated with this vector w. So this is a hashing procedure, and it's going to give us this value h. Now we want to construct another value, and that is z. z is defined as s1 plus or minus, we're going to pick a convention here, so plus or minus h times s0. s0 is coming from the secret key. So A and S0, they came from the secret key. The secret key is very essential in this signing procedure. So Z is a potential signature. So we don't know if this value of Z is actually going to be the signature that we will use. We have to make sure that this is a valid signature. Now, if we just uh, do this in one round and then broadcast this value of Z publicly, then there is a risk that we're going to reveal information about the secret key. So we have to check whether this Z reveals information about the secret key, because we cannot afford to risk revealing this secret key information. So we might have to run this procedure multiple times. If we find that this value of Z is invalid, then we just have to restart. So we can think of this as a loop. We run this signing procedure until we construct a valid signature for this message. Once we have constructed a valid signature, we're going to send it through the public channel. So this is going to go through the public channel, and we're going to send the signed message. SM is the signed message. And this will include the message, which we hashed over here, uh, and we will also send H and Z. So I'll write Z first, and then we'll follow that by H. So collectively, Z and H are the signature for this message. We have a message, and we also have the signature. And we're sending that together, and that forms the signed message, SM. So that is all that this participant is going to do. So this participant has generated a pair of keys, the secret key and the public key. Then the public key was broadcast and sent through this public channel, and the secret key was used to sign a message. And then that signed message was also broadcast through the public channel. So all of this information in the public channel is publicly available. So the signature is publicly available. That's why we have to be very careful when we're constructing this Z over here. We have to make sure that it does not reveal information about S0 and all of these details that are present in the secret key, because that would compromise the digital signature. Now let's have a look at what the other participant needs to do. So the other participant is the verifier. The verifier needs to use the public key to verify that this is indeed the, the signed message. So let's define a vector called u. We're going to define this vector u using a. So we're going to have a multiplying z, and then we're going to have minus plus h times p0. And we're also going to do that higher order bits procedure. So this square bracket denotes that procedure. So we're going to have the square bracket over here because we're going to do an approximation procedure. We're only going to consider the higher order bits in all of the coefficients of the resulting vector. So keep in mind that I've put two options over here. Here we have plus or minus, and then here we have minus or plus. So we can pick either convention as long as the signs are opposite. So if in the definition of Z, we pick a plus sign over here, then there has to be a minus sign over here. And uh, the, the other option for the different convention choice is that if we pick a minus sign over here, then there has to be a plus sign 
in the definition of u. So we're going to uh, use u in a similar way that w was used over here. We're going to create a value v. So v is created by the verifier. And we can define v to be the hash of the message concatenated with this vector u. And then we need to check, is this value of v that we get the same as h? So is that the same as the result of this hash over here? And I'll put a question mark over here. So this is how we do verification. We check whether this value of v is the same as the value of h that was sent in the signed message. And I will also put a question mark over here because we need to check whether this is indeed a valid, a valid signature in this procedure. And if it is not a valid signature, then we have to restart until we get a valid signature. So this is the signing procedure, and this is the verification procedure. So you can see that V and H play analogous roles, and U and W also play analogous roles. So let's see why this procedure actually works. Let's unpack this expression over here, and let's see why this expression is actually equivalent to this expression, given that we have a valid signature for this message. So we'll see that underneath. Let's unpack this big expression. So we have A multiplying Z. But what is Z? Z is defined over here. So we have S1 plus or minus H times S0. So this value over here is the vector Z. That came with the signed message. In fact, it's part of the digital signature. So Z and H can collectively be referred to as the signature to this message. So that's the first part of this expression. And then we have minus plus H times P0. But what is P0? That's this public column vector that we generated at the beginning. So that is going to be A times the secret vector S0 plus the error vector E0. And this is P0. So this big expression over here, that's the same as the expression that we've used to define the vector U. But we have to make sure that we do this approximation procedure, where we only consider the higher order bits of the coefficients of this resulting vector. So that's what those square brackets are telling us. Now, in this verification procedure, A and P0 came from the public key. So we're using that information from the public key to define this value u. And in the signed message, we got m. So that's being used to generate this hash v. And we also got the signature, which includes z and h. So z appears over here, and h appears over here. So z and h come from the signature. A and p0 come from the public key. So we're combining the public key with the signature to create this value. And you can see that h is also used over here because we are verifying whether these two values are the same. So that's the verification procedure. Now let's do some algebraic manipulation and see why uh, this value of u is going to give us a very similar form to what we have over here for w. So we've, we've got a times z minus plus h times p0. Let's unpack what's happening here. So one term that we're going to get is a times this S1. So we're going to have S1 over here. This is the term that we're looking for. So this is the term that shows up in the signing procedure. And that term is used to define W. But we're also going to get other terms. So let's see what those terms are. So we're going to have an error term that comes from this uh, term over here. So we're going to have minus plus H times E0. So that came from this term over here. We have that E0. And then we're going to get uh, two other terms that will cancel. So if we move this a inside over here, we're going to get plus or minus h a times s0. And then from this term over here, we're going to have minus plus h a s0. 
So that is minus plus H A S zero. And these two terms over here, they're going to cancel. So you can see that the sign is opposite. So the terms that have A over here, they're going to cancel, they're going to give zero. And this over here is just going to be a noise term. So this is a small error. We're going to have a noise term that is being added or subtracted, depending on our choice of convention, to this term. And this is the term that we're looking for. So when we perform that higher order bits approximation procedure that is denoted by these square brackets, we're going to see that this value over here is the same as this value because that approximation procedure will get rid of the noise term. So that's this noise term over here. So that is an explanation as to why this verification procedure works. So as a summary of the entire lattice-based digital signature scheme, we have key generation, which produces a secret key that is used for signing, and we have to broadcast a public key, and that public key is used to verify the signed message. And that is done by another participant. So all of this red stuff over here, that's done by the participant that is doing the signing of the message. And this blue stuff over here, that is done by the verifier. And the verifier is verifying that this message is indeed a true signed message. So this is how you do it. And this is a lattice-based scheme. And down here, we can see the algebraic justification for why this verification procedure works. So keep in mind that we can choose two different conventions. So over here, we can have plus or minus, but we just have to make sure that uh, for a given convention, we have the opposite sign in this definition over here. And then we can see that the algebra works out as long as the signs in the definitions of Z and U are opposite. And also keep in mind that when we define Z in this way, it might be the case that this is actually an invalid signature because it reveals information about the secret key. So we have to uh, do a loop over here and we have to make sure that this gives us a valid signature. So we keep repeating this procedure until we get a valid signature and then we can send that through the public channel over to the verifier. And the verifier can then perform the verification procedure and see if the result of this hash is the same. So if V is equal to H. So this was a lattice-based digital signature scheme.